scripture lesson today is from the book of John, chapter 10, verses 11 through 15. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. Shall we pray? Father, thank you so much for this time. I'm asking you to pour your Holy Spirit in each one of us so may we understand your word and apply it to our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. You know, in modern time, we hear and use many new vocabularies that didn't exist before. There are hundreds of thousands of new words have been uh, invented last uh, actually 50 years. For example, leader. I mean, the, the term leader is very familiar to us. We use and speak all the time. But up until 18th century, the term leader was not existed. At the time, people used the terms like a king and owner and master and lord all the time, but they didn't use the term leader. But 18th century, the, actually 1755, the first, time, first person who used the term was Samuel Johnson. He was an English writer and used the term in one of his books. He defines the leader as the one who goes first, the one who is the head of a party or a faction. The leadership, leadership is also a 20th century concept. After World War I, people started to think about all those war heroes who had the ability to lead the world victory. So they started to use the word uh, leadership, but we don't know who used the term the uh, first time. So we use a lot of new vocabulary that didn't exist before. But today, young generation also use a lot of new vocabularies. First of all is Instagram. Would you put it up there? I know you know Instagram. It's a mobile device application. You take a picture or a video in your phone or iPad and send it to someone else. That's called Instagram. You might not know the term, but as long as you take a picture and send it to someone else, that's called Instagram. Next one is edutainment. Yeah, edutainment. Edutainment means movie, TV, and computer programs that educate and entertain people at the same time. You know, like Sesame Street and Sit the Science Kid and Team Umizumi. If you have a little kid, you know what I'm talking about. Those uh, TV programs are edutainment. Next one is a fidget spinner. You know, I bet you guys have seen this. You know, it's spinning all the time. And nowadays, people, kids call each other, you are fidget spinner. It means you are hyper, super hyper. You have to move you know, all the time. This is a toy. But when you look at it, it's not really a toy. What is this? You're holding and you're spinning. But the thing is that it helps kids stabilize their emotion. Today is a different generation. They have to hold it and spinning. So you are fidget spinner. It means you are <laughs> super hyper. Next one is selfie generation. Self, selfie sounds like selfish, but actually selfie cell means a cell phone cell, and fee comes from self, myself. Actually, selfie 
could mean selfish or egocentric. So selfish generation means just myself. They don't have a concept of community. And we don't know what they think. We don't know what they want. They just spontaneous. They just decide something immediately. The best example is in the 2017 presidential election, and selfie generation had a superpower for Donald Trump to win, because at that time all the surveys expected that Hillary Clinton was going to win, but actually Donald Trump won the election. Because selfie generation, when they were surveyed, asked the question, they said, I'm going to vote for Hillary Clinton. You know, I'm going to vote for uh, Donald Trump. But last moment, they changed their mind. Because we, if you are Republican, if you are Democrat, you are forever Republican, you are forever Democrat, you barely change your uh, political uh, ideology. But selfie generation, they don't want to belong to any established institution, religious and political institution. They just want to be by themselves. That's a selfie generation. So as our culture and society evolves, new vocabulary are generated. They reflect who we are, they reflect what we do, and they reflect the way we think. Now, two years ago when I came to this church with my family, uh, Pastor Mickey came up to me and said, after the worship, Jay, are we going to go for lunch? Are we going to go for dinner at 1 o'clock today? I was very confused. Dinner at 1 o'clock. I never used the dinner as a lunch. So when he told me dinner at 1 o'clock, I was very confused. Dinner tonight? What is supposed to be 7? Or lunch 1 o'clock? It's a different culture. The city that I came from, we never talk about mile. When you drive, you say, oh, here to Scottsbluff, 50 miles, here to Sydney, 70 miles, here to Cheyenne, 50 miles. But the, the city that I came from never talk about mile. We talk about a time. When I leaving? Well, I'm leaving for Sydney in the morning. Oh, it takes about two hours. I'm leaving in the afternoon. Oh, it takes about, you know, out and a half. So different culture produce different concept of the world. World is not just the world itself, but we reflect who we are, reflect the way people live. Jesus in today's passage and says, I am the shepherd, you are my sheep. People who heard this message must be very confused because we hear this message all the time. To us, you are my shepherd, you are my sheep. Nothing new because we read, we hear, we say all the time. But people 2,000 years ago, this is a new concept. This is not new language. It's like you go back to 17th century and talk about postmodernism and talk about automobile. People have no idea what they're talking about. When God created the first human beings, God was their personal God. They communicate each other. They had a very intimate relationship. But after the first human being was expelled from the Garden of Eden, their humanity, the nature of humanity, who were created in the image of God, they are losing their nature of the image of God, so they were getting far away from God. They are losing their belief about who God is, where God came from. It was not God's intention not to be their personal God, but the simple nature of humanity limited God 
within their humanistic religious frame. So God still our personal God, but people put God within their own humanistic belief system, so they put the God far away from their personal God. So in the scripture, we see the word God of Abraham, God of Jacob, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, they represent the whole nation, not individual God. Even though the author didn't intend to say that God is not our personal God, but the people who heard this message understood God as not their personal God, but God is the God of Israel, the whole nation. God is not my personal God. God doesn't understand my personal pain. God doesn't understand my personal suffering, because God is not their personal God anymore. So when Jesus said, I am your shepherd, shepherd, you are my sheep, then people look at each other and scratch their head. What is Jesus talking about? Who is you here? Who are you here? Who is my here? Who is the sheep? They might think that Jesus indicating the 12 disciples who was uh, surrounding our Lord all the time. You know, John chapter 10 is connected to Je uh, John chapter 9. In John chapter 9, Jesus healed a blind man. At that time, there were a lot of people were there. You know, young and old, poor and rich, and a lot of religious leaders. So chapter 10, has the same audience, a lot of people. So when Jesus said, you are my sheep, you means everyone, each one of them. Jesus is not talking about you as a whole group, but each one of you, Jesus is talking about, but people don't understand that Jesus is talking about me. I am your shepherd. But they look at each other, maybe he's your shepherd. I'm a sinner. Maybe you uh, look faithful than I am. You look you know, sincere than I am. But God is your God. God is your shepherd, but not my shepherd. They don't understand. You know, this is the story of my friend's wife. And my friend's wife came from Russia 20 years ago. Her name is, I have to look at my note, it's hard to pronounce. Her name is Litais Paiskia Rosensvinsky. Don't trust my pronunciation, all right? <laughs> Litais Paiskia Rosensvinsky. She came here for college 20 years ago, then she met her husband, then they married. Then she changed the name, you know, Cindy Peterson. Cindy's first name, Peterson's last name. Her husband called her, you know, honey, all the time. And kids call her, you know, call their mom, mom. Her friends don't know how to pronounce the name, so they call Liz, Liz. Not Litaspaskia Rosensvinsky. <laughs> so 20 years, she <laughs> forgot her name. The one day one of her relatives called her from uh, Russia because her parents, her father passed away. Then her relative say, you know, on the phone, hey, uh, are you a Rita Spysky, a Then she didn't know it was her. <laughs> but she forgot her name for 20 years, so she just hung up. The in a minute, she realized, oh, that's me, the person is looking for me. But good thing is the person, her relatives call her again and say her name, oh, that's me. My name is Rita Spysikia Rosefudensky. She realized that I'm not just mother, you know, wife, or friend's friend. I am also my parent's kid, which I have forgotten for a long time. 
So when her relatives called her, she didn't know it was her because she forgot her where she came from. Jesus says, I am your shepherd, you are my sheep. Jesus, God keeps talking about that I am your shepherd. In the King David, the most cherishable king in Israel history, mentioned Psalm chapter 23 we read today, you are my shepherd. Other authors also mention that God is our shepherd. But the, throughout the Old Testament history, they forgot that God is God of love, God is God of mercy. Their heart is hardened. Their simple nature put God away from personal God, just to put God somewhere around, God is not my God anymore. God is God of justice. God is God of punishment. God is not my God. God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and David, who are most powerful people in all the time's history. Someone like me, sinner, I don't belong to that category. God is not my God. So when Jesus says, I am your shepherd, they think maybe God is talking about Jay, he's a pastor. Maybe it's the God is Jesus talking about Joyce, you know, Janet, you know, a lot of people here who are faithful, but not me. I am a sinner. But the audience consists of many different kinds of people, young, old, sinner, someone who religious leader, and Pharisees and Sadducees. Jesus indicates each one of them. I am your shepherd. You are my sheep. So Jesus says in today's chapter, I am a good shepherd. Good means I am a genuine. I am a real. I am a sincere who knows my own. Knows mean here is not knowing from, it's not knowledge from a textbook or any book. It's not knowing a history Abraham, you know, a history, you know, Ronald Reagan, but no means here perceive or understand thoroughly. You know, you holding your baby, your baby, and said, I know my kid. You know, I can say, I know your kid, but what I know is, I know your kid's name, I know your kids belong to you. Well, when you say, I know my kids, I mean, you know when your baby is sick, you know when your baby is hungry, you know when to change the diaper. Also, when you say you know, no means your love, your care, your sacrifice. God say, I know my own, means he knows us deeply, personally. He wants to come to us personally, as a personal God. That's what Jesus tried to say. I am your shepherd. I'm talking to you, each one of you. But people still don't understand. People think that oh, he's not my God. Because I am a sinner. I'm a big time sinner. Today, sometimes we still have the same guilty feeling. We confess. The Lord, you are my God. But the way we live our life as a Christian, we treat God as the public God. God is a God of Jay, God of someone else. Not my God. He never answers my prayer. But today, the Lord said, I am your God. You are my sheep. I am your shepherd. That's why Paul says first or second Corinthians chapter 13, examine yourself whether you are living in the spirit of God. Test yourself. Don't you see the Christ, Jesus Christ, the spirit of God lives within you? We have to test ourselves. We confess that God is my God, but do we really trust God? Is my God 
or God is someone else God. All our power, spiritual power, our belief, all the strength from our faith grows this basic principle. If you want me to pick one passage, the essence of the scripture, the essence of all Jesus' message, I'm going to pick John chapter 10, verse 11 to 15. I am your shepherd, you are my God, you are my own, I lay my life for you. This is the essence. That's why Jesus came to us. Jesus came to us to be our shepherd, to lead us, guide us, listen to us, take care of us, understand us. But we put God somewhere here and treat the Lord as someone else God. But today God says, I am your God. I want to be your God. I want to be your personal savior today. To finish my uh, sermon, I want us to confess the Lord is my God. Would you put it up there? It's very simple. And when I say Lord, you are my, and next to my, put your own name, right? So we say Lord, you are you are my J Shepherd. Don't say my name. Okay, say your name. All right? Let's do this. Lord, you are my J Shepherd. Can I do it again? When you say truly believe, okay, Lord is your Shepherd. Let's say it again. Lord, you are my J Shepherd. Let's pray. Father, you are my Shepherd. You can be my friend shepherd, you can be Frank's shepherd, you can be Janet's shepherd, but you are also my shepherd, my personal God. I belong to you. You care for me, you understand me, you hear me, you know my pain, you know my suffering. This is the core belief that we need to have, Lord, every day in our lives. Please strengthen us, fill us with your spirit so we can truly believe that you are my Jay's shepherd. In your name we pray. Amen.